okay, so it's not that you got to be physically intimidating. It, right. it You have to be smart enough that I respect what you said, but but there's also charm because you can't respect yeah. a, a teacher unless they charm you out of your ignorance. So there's so many qualities that go together in making a woman like respect that you might have something better to say than her. Yo, 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 what up, Square Pimp Brigade? On this episode, we have comedian Khalees Hawkins. She's here to discuss getting over a recent breakup, um, having to settle in the relationships, and do men want a strong woman and how to deal with that. This is a really good episode. Don't forget also, if y'all need a consultation, hit me at DanteNero.com. Click on consult. Don't forget to follow us on Patreon, www.patreon.com slash manschool202. And Harry, talk yeah, to me. That's where we, that's, by the way, Patreon.com, in addition to doing the bonus shows uh, like we're doing today, we're doing the bonus show with Khalees where we talk about uh, what is the thing that women find the most unattractive and how hard it is to tell the truth but necessary and on top of that we're uploading all the old episodes of man school uh aka the beige phillips show when we first started out those are being uploaded exclusively on patreon.com so that's where you can go get them and uh also if you want relationship consultations you can email me at advice from harry at gmail.com i'm not an alpha male i'm not a beta male either i'm just a better man better man Put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't. Yo, what's up, Square Pimp Brigade? GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The Sexual Revolution is being podcasted, and I am excited, um, because this is a special show. Now, I know I've said that 500 times before, but this time I mean it. Um, We got a special guest tonight, somebody really special. I'm going to get to that in a minute. But first and foremost, Harry, what's popping? You good? Hey, hey, Don. Go for it. Sorry, Khalees. Go for it. You go. You're the guest. Hi. I didn't even, I didn't say hello to you yet, Khalees. I didn't introduce you. So wait a goddamn minute. (laughs) Don't go nowhere. Don't leave. (laughs) Uh, Harry, you good? Oh man, I'm doing great. Uh, I'm doing great. Get keeping it together, getting it together, keeping it together, and moving forward every right. day, man. But this is, I'm still having a tough time keeping these gators down. All right, fair, fair enough. Makes sense. Um, I want to introduce my guest here. Um, I love this girl so much. I mean, she's uh like a little like a little baby sister to me in a way. It's one I never had. Um. And uh, we'll get into her. She's a really special person, very funny comedian. Give it up for Khalees Hawkins, y'all. Give it up for Khalees Hawkins. Boom, boom. Thank what? you. I just realized my Bluetooth wasn't connected. That's why I thought you were talking to me. Oh, okay. All right. Cool, cool, cool. I can hear you now. Hi. How, how you been, sweetness? How you doing? I'm good. Everything's strange, I think, since still since COVID. I still think that. And the, uh, I think that little time with the air when the air turned orange yeah 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 it caused a little ptsd oh really we're all just like we don't have no control over this shit (laughs) were you really were you really freaked out about that about the orange air yeah yeah. i wouldn't say that i was freaked out i think i was just like i went right back into lockdown mode and then really? we were so we were out. Of, yeah, I started getting like things. I started getting masks. I started getting, you know, because I have a kid. And, yeah, yeah. And she has all kind of different health issues. So I was nervous about her. Mm-hmm. So when you say was I freaked out, the, that's my natural state of like, I'm a very <laughs> react. I'm a very acting person. So I just did what I do. <laughs> I reacted. OK, <laughs> fair enough. It's weird because it didn't it didn't even bother me. I was kind of like, oh, this will pass, you know, just like. Did you go out I, in it without a mask on? Yeah, like I didn't really, I wasn't really watching the news and stuff. And so I just kind of went out and I was like, wow, was, who's doing barbecue? You know, <laughs> like, <laughs> I was like, man, I love me some barbecue. <laughs> my, and, my story is so much worse. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like, wait a minute, that's kind of hard to breathe. And I was like, this is weird. Exactly. Okay, so mine was I woke up off my couch nauseous and I smelled ammonia. So I called three one one and did like an anonymous call, of like the neighbors <laughs> cooking up some shit. I don't know what's going on. I feel <laughs> nauseous. I was dizzy, and then the firefighters came and they're like we need you to come put the code in. I was like, okay. And they were like, why are you being all anonymous? I was like, I don't know. And they're like, they were put, installing a window. Then later on that day, we find out. 
that all the air is polluted. And that's what I was having a reaction to. But the firefighters looked at me like I was crazy. Well, it is kind of crazy. You called the fire department thinking that people were co- cooking ammonia. But I mean, you know, it's, if you don't know that it, the air is poison. Yeah, you're right. What, so you didn't check the news or nothing. You didn't, you didn't check. I, I woke up nauseous, dizzy, and there was a strong smell of acetone. Like it spilled in my apartment. Okay. So I Googled that <laughs> and it said. <laughs> and then you went full Karen by calling the authorities. <laughs> but also my, my neighbors hadn't been home in months. So I didn't even know who would be there. Yeah. It was them. <laughs> and then you were like, they were like, well, who, who should we ask for at the door? And you were like, I got to go. <laughs> They're like, ma'am. Should we measure your apartment? And I was I had to think real quick. I was like, does my apartment look sane right now? Or are they going to walk in there like, oh, now we see why she called. <laughs> <laughs> so good to see you. I love, um, Khalees, let me say for the fans, I, Khalees is one of my favorite people. One of my favorite people because she is unmitigatedly honest. <laughs> like, oh, just, my God. Just so, which is not a bad thing. It's It's one of the principles that we talk about all the time is 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 honesty and truth and and credibility and stuff like that and and, and um and and Khalees is uh unmitigatedly like that like has no no breaks on that like she's so honest <laughs> and it's so pure and it and I just think that you're such a beautiful person because of that it's just like it's what you see is what you get and it's kind of why Whenever I, 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 it's why I like you so much is because there, I, I don't have to, I don't feel like I have to be cautious about mm-hmm. what I'm seeing. I, I can, oh, this is it. This is it. And I like it. I like, oh, that's, that's so refreshing. I have this exact opposite effect on others, but I don't know. So what do you think that means? If I'm, if I'm making people go, Oh, what the fuck is her problem? Dante also likes telling people the truth. So he likes seeing it in action. It's sort of like, uh, having a superpower that only he and you understand, you know, like so Dante appreciates game game appreciates game. (laughs) That's really what it is. And I was, I I was going to ask, what do you tell your followers about honesty that it is that you talk, you know, you say you preach about honesty. Uh, well, so we'll how get, does that incorporate into somebody's life if they're striving for honesty? Well, we'll and, and why that. can't they be honest? Wait a minute. Slow <laughs> down. We just got in. We, we, we're two minutes in. We'll get into <laughs> all of that. So um, first question was, why do you have this this opposite reaction on other people? And it's a really easy answer. It's a really easy question. You see, when you have people are liars, liar, li- a lot of times lies comes from insecurity. And their insecurity, uh, there are things that they're insecure about, so they're trying to hide it. And when they're trying to hide it, they lie to hide it, right? And so when your honesty, as there's a thing that I always say, is my honesty sharpens your truth. Meaning, as more honest I am, the more on- honest you have to be. Right. It, it 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 doesn't you can't I can't be, you know, I can't be unmitigatedly honest. And then you're telling, you know, tall tales. It's because I'm going to be looking at you side eye. You're going to know that I'm I, I know you're lying and <laughs> and then you're uncomfortable with that. So when you're honest about people, people would rather liars would rather be surround themselves with liars because then there's like this dinner theater that goes on and you play your part. I play my part. I don't press you beyond what your flaws are and your insecurities and you do the same. And then we keep our, the social interaction into a very comfortable place where I can say who I am and and have no proof of it, even though you may know that I'm not that, but because I'm, because you're not who you say you are, we both just lie and then we stay in this really comfortable place and then we can move on with our life without ever really confronting what our flaws are, what the things we have to work on. And then it doesn't force us to have any work. We have no work to do. Um, Because if you're honest about what you are and you have things that are, you know, that you know are wrong or you know that are weaknesses, 
And you're it's one thing if you could say, oh, everybody hates me. Yeah. And, and what part do you have? Whereas when you go, people hate me because I <laughs> I am a dick or I'm moody or I'm overbearing or I'm possessive or I'm selfish or I'm insecure. Now you have you, you you don't get to bitch about that. You don't get the sympathy of that once you admit what you are. You either have to do something about it or you're forced to shut up because you're you you know that something is present and you don't do anything about it. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. And so what I find, uh, you know, I'm somebody else that's like you too is uh, Metzger. Kurt Metzger is very much like that. Just, you know, I think we are so similar, but I don't, I'm, you know, I'm not that much like him. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, I mean, I mean, he's honest in his own skin and you're honest in, in your, I mean, based on your experiences and, and whatever, and it is what it is. And I, I just think it's a beautiful thing because it, it forces you either to accept your inadequacies or work or do something about them. And you well, know, see, longer- that's, that's the honesty. So you, you're honest in a way with intention. Yeah. And I, I definitely have to have intention and, um, and, and know that I'm speaking in truth most of the time, but there's a part of me that I think I realized where I don't know I'm being more honest than the person sitting across from me. It's kind of like, yeah. For me, my brain works like the emperor's wearing no clothes. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. for me, the clothes were never there. And then I got to find out you're pretending there's clothes there. And I got to go, hmm, now how do I talk to you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. <laughs> oh, shit. I didn't know. We didn't know together right. that you're this thing. So let's see. Like, I didn't know <laughs> how much of a liar you were. Yeah. You know. I didn't no. know what a How piece I supposed of garbage to, yeah. you were before. And now I get it. I get it. You know? Okay. And so <laughs> it depends on my mood, whether or not I'm going to like step into their dinner party or not. Right. Right. And that's only with age. That's yeah. only like you used to yeah. be. I gotcha. Liar. <laughs> 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 with age yeah. and energy, you go, I don't want to play this game. Yeah. Right. I don't right. feel like it. Well, even that, even when you were, I, I, I caught you. Uh, I, 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 that was one of the things that I loved about you most. Is, is oh, maybe that, that was before I stopped drinking as much. <laughs> <laughs> it would would just, you say you it, were more honest when you were drinking, Khalees? Because I can't oh, imagine sure. a, a more honest Khalees. I don't know if more honest, just a little less tactful. But I, th- I think more interested in, 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 you know, more, more like, let's find out. Yeah. You say you're less, more results. less aloof, less aloof. Yeah, more results oriented. <laughs> yeah, like you. Come here. You look like you kind of. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's what uh what always what always attracted to me because it was <laughs> what you see is what you get, and it was just there. And then any any misconceptions that somebody would have about you, you would be like, oh, you thought that? No. I, I I mean, <laughs> so um, I remember you saying, um, so I mean, you know, the fans that see the uh, Khalees is beautiful. She's beautiful outside. She's beautiful, but she's such an attractive woman. And Khalees would say, "Oh, you think because I'm pretty?" I remember you saying, "You think because I'm pretty that I'm stuck up and I won't fuck you?" No, I mean, I'll I'll fuck you. <laughs> a- ask what you could have just asked, <laughs> and I was I always remember you say I'm like I would yeah you got some pussy, <laughs> and it was just I remember you saying that so honest and uh, even even when you <laughs> I remember someone times watching you on stage they were like oh I'm, I'm yeah I'm crazy yeah I like this 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 thing of just this awareness and 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 comfort in who you are and I, and I think that's what makes you um very attra- uh, just an attractive or just a beautiful person inside um <laughs> just uh and you always make me laugh because it's just you, I want to talk to you about something and you would just <laughs> like bam <laughs> <laughs> and it's like every time I see you too I go oh shit good and it's like whatever I was thinking of for the last six months I go I have one thing I need to know from you <laughs> and, and, I, and I kind of feel like it's me like you wait for me to <laughs> think like me. and I must not have your phone number because I called you a couple months ago I just got out of a relationship 
relationship. Really? And I called you. Yeah, I called you when I was trying to make my decision. I'm I'm actually happy you didn't answer or I had the wrong number because uh I figured it out. But like I called you to ask you for some advice, but you, oh, you, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm, we I'm had gonna, a misconnection. Yeah, I think you got it written because I've had the same number forever. So I'm gonna um I'm, I'm, I'm gonna text you right now. So you got and I would have I would have welcomed a call from you because it's And that's just, what it is. Wait, we're very busy people. We meet like thousands of people and we don't remember most of these people. Yeah. And then the connection that you can make in this industry that I feel like I've made with you, when yeah. I, I can't see you every day. We're not in high school. I can't hang out with you all the time. You got adult shit to do. You got a life to live. And so yeah. do I. I got I got multiple lives out here to live. So yeah. when there's a major life event, I feel like yeah. I always do find you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, trust we I trust your perspective, you know? Yeah, because I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you what it is, no matter what, and I'm gonna give you the honest answer. I want you to have the tools to make to make the uh you know to make the decisions that you could that you can make. And it's it's a weird kind of thing because um so you broke up with your dude. Yeah. Wow, I didn't see that coming. Neither did I. It six it was like six years, almost seven years. Yeah, you figured you were settling in. <laughs> <laughs> you put your pictures up in your cubicle and everything. <laughs> I don't even take pictures down. I go, mm, that was him. <laughs> there you go next to him. What? I don't even take pictures down. I, I just leave them up on the Instagram like a graveyard. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the elephant graveyard. <laughs> <laughs> don't come back. We'll kill you. <laughs> How That's how it feels. That's oh how my god, I will not no. go back to a relationship. It'll kill me. I don't leave a relationship until I'm mentally unwell. <laughs> mm. But that's also go, how you go into it, like, though. In all fairness, true. Because yeah. I usually don't wait. Yeah. Usually, yeah. this you is don't... when I would be falling back in love. Harry, it's weird. I got you in one headphone. Is that you got weird? me in one? Uh, Khalees, yeah. you got me in one, or am I in both on yours? Yeah, I only have you. I only have you in my left ear. Only in the left yeah. ear. What is that about? I have no yeah. idea why that's going on. All right, hold on. Some of your bullshit. Hold on. <laughs> Me, how is that possible? All right, I don't know. I'll have to work on it. You guys do your thing while I try to. Yeah. So, but he, so okay. First, there's something I I think that I will I will give you. Uh, you know, I'm gonna give you this gem, and then you can <laughs> hold on to, it, and then you could kind of. It's kind of like it's kind of like a a. a a Pfizer vaccination and shoot you up with it and then it just kind of works in your body wherever you need it. You know what I mean? Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> uh, um, so I, I think, um, so I'm, I'm, I've come to realize that uh, 98%, 99% of people are liars. So, um, Dude, yeah. And, and what I think that we think about liars, a lot of times we think about liars in the context of um, somebody that lies to get something out of the situation. I'm going to lie so that I can get this or kind of get that. But what we also do a lot of times is even when people are not malicious liars, they lie because they don't want to end up in a confrontation or they don't want to, they don't want you to know the true self or what they really mean. And they don't want to, they don't want to do that. Or sometimes they lie because they don't want to hurt people's feelings because, and what happens is the truth is the truth. It stays the same no matter what. And because it stays the same, whether you lie about it or you don't lie about it, it still, it still affects the situation no matter what. Um, so th there's a state of affairs. Like for instance, um, I was dating somebody who, really wasn't a sexual person right like didn't really like i mean sex was okay but it was like whatever and anybody that listens to my podcast uh would know that i like my dick sucks i like eating ass i like you know i'm, I'm all in right mm -hmm. and um so to 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 listen to me just to know me, anybody would know that. I mean, I mean, to know, you never to know that you eat ass. I mean, let's yes, be honest. It, it, yeah, absolutely. I mean. Nobody would go. <laughs> nobody would go. Dante doesn't eat ass. I or I wonder 
I wonder if. (laughs) And and or if you were a person who had questions about ass eating, the first person you would call would be like, "Hey, you know what? Let me get Dante on the line." (laughs) And you're like, "Are you sure he got?" And they're like, "Oh yeah, yeah, yeah." You get to ask strangers. Oh, absolutely. So uh, to to to. You know, and the physical aspect of of a relationship is important to me. And I mean, because I think it's just as important as the emotional side, even the intellectual stimulation. All of those things are very important, but I'm I'm, I'm an intense person anyway. So why somebody would talk to me or pursue me knowing that that's not it's just it's really absurd. Do you know what I mean? It's just an, it's an absurd thing because eventually all you're going to do is when you get comfortable in the relationship, you're going to revert back to this person who's sort of asexual. And then I'm like, Hey, I was being who I was in the beginning when, you know, when I put a dog, I you remember I put a dog collar on you. You remember, and we <laughs> right, and now it's like, ooh, mm, let's just watch a movie. And I'm like, yeah, we could do that afterwards. But so it's just a weird thing when people are lying. They're lying, and then when you find them to be mm. true, with, and and I think and you know the lie the, was in the confines of the relationship. The interesting part is sometimes the other party will lie or change. And then they expect you to change with it as if that's the norm, as if that's not what it was like. That's just I, I don't know who that other person was. This is what we're doing now. And that's the tricky yeah. part, because if you allow that to happen, then that's what the relationship becomes in a way right? for most people anyway, because they never address it. What I yeah. see your eyes, your brow is furrowed. Oh, because I, I was just thinking about like the, the idea of these people. And I was like. I was writing about this. I call them like tourists in your life. They they're dating you because they need a vacation from themselves. And so you can only try to surf for so long before you realize you can't do that shit. That's that that's that person's life. And right. you gotta go home. Eventually you gotta go home. Right, 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 right. <laughs> and, and and it's like they got that out of you. Yeah. And they don't know, they don't even know. Like the only way we can know, the only way I realize it, because I've been in and out a lot of monogamous, like I'm a serial monogamous. Yeah, yeah. And so I so I can I can watch these relationships and how they unfold. And the one person, you know, as comedians, sometimes we'll date somebody who always wanted to try it, and then they date us instead. And then afterwards yeah. they try it and then they fail. Right. Uh-huh, right. So I realized when he did that, when that was the course of events afterwards that that's all I was anyway. I was just an extension of a dream he couldn't achieve. And then he, since he couldn't hold on to me or ruin that for me, take it away from me, he had to, he had to move on. He, he tried it for himself for a second and it didn't fit. So like I call these people tourists, this relationships where they're just tourists in your life. Okay. Let me, let me rewind because people don't know. So your ex was a comic. Should I not this current ex? He was also a comic. I got I had four comic exes. Okay, right, this right. is the world yeah. I but I'm we're dabble in. The, we're about the, <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, this is what you're around. You know what I mean? Yeah. We, we eat what's, you know, nobody's eating <laughs> dragon fruit. That's They got that in Hawaii. You know what I mean? So, yeah, it's, it's, it's like comedy. You do open mic, they give you a drink ticket. They also, you know, hand you a boyfriend, slide yeah, you, you a little, <laughs> slide you a baby across the table. Uh, you know, it's a life. <laughs> have you met Jeff? <laughs> <laughs> well, he's going to be with you for the next three years, helping you develop as a comedian. <laughs> <laughs> giving you material. Um giving you more trauma. Just get re-triggering all that shit. Because you haven't learned yet. <laughs> so let me so so was he a com uh, so your your ex was a comic, or at least I this first was- one. No, the ver- the one I'm talking about is two exes ago. He was not a comedian. He saw me at a comedy show. We okay. ended up staying together for a few years, and then he tried comedy right afterwards. And so I call the people like that. That okay. attach to you for something that they want for themselves. Mm-hmm. That's that's that. Yeah. Okay. But that so also just, happens so. when you have a very dominant personality, though, because that that'll happen where you're you're some that happens a lot to I find men who do comedy, especially like it becomes enticing. Or Dante, we had a rule about that before. Of like a woman is a reflection of oh. what the man is in the relationship of of what the guy is yes right yeah 
And so if he's if he's if he's dealing with somebody, look, so you can never you can never ask a woman to be less strong. Like you 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 know when a when a girl when a, a girlfriend would say, Oh, he's a great guy. Give him a chance that the, you you might as well never do that because you're asking a woman who's very defined at who she is to be something else to accommodate somebody who's not a man who's not man enough to be with her in the first place. You know, does that make sense? I I I listened to Jill. Jill Scott had this quote. She was on the Breakfast Club and she was like, "A man could tell me what to do, but he got to be able to tell me what to do." You know what I mean? And I thought that was such a dope thing. It's like like I know if he could tell me. I also know if he can't tell me. It it's it's there's a there's a trust and there's a uh, uh, I, I guess a bed that's there. It's sort of okay. For lack of a better um, analogy, it's kind of the way you are and I, you and I are when you see me. Do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? You go, oh, there you are. Let me ask you something. <laughs> 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 but you, there's a lot of people you would hold that in and go, yeah. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not asking you. I don't oh, know. for sure. Oh my God, <laughs> I was I was um out the other night a week ago at a club, mm. and I was just having a regular conversation. And so here's the problem, and this is what people don't know about. You know, when we when we see each other at a club and we start vibing out. People yeah. are like, why? What the hell could they what? possibly be so <laughs> excited about? And this is what they don't realize. Just being smart even isn't enough. That's yeah. not enough. Yeah. It's got to yeah. be fun. You got to make whatever the smart shit you're saying entertaining or else don't tell me at all. And also right. it has to be original. <laughs> it has to be new. It has to be something that you can think out in the moment, not something you learned and brought here and you're trying to remember some shit that you heard somebody else figured out for yeah. you. Yeah. And so so while, so while I'm sitting here talking to this other guy, I'm just talking. And he's commentating, trying to give me the lesson of it. And I'm thinking, if you don't think I don't fucking know <laughs> the information I'm giving you, you don't think see, you don't know you're telling me what I'm telling you because I didn't know I had to spell it. <laughs> I can't have a conversation with somebody who thinks they came up with something, but I just taught it to him because I'm entertaining him and teaching them. They don't know that's what I'm doing though. They right, just think right, right, they just right. think I'm they just think I'm partying. And they're like, "You know what you missed?" And I'm like, "No, I I did that. I know that I did that." Right, 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 and if right. I didn't know, I knew it right before you did. Right, 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 <laughs> right. Cuz I'm the one who thought it. They, it's so crazy. You know boyfriends do that a lot when they're in a position that exactly what you're talking about. I obviously as a woman don't know for sure if that has to be the gender roles, but it's fine as a foundation. If that's your perspective, I would say that is the most irritating thing when you're not equally yoked with a man and he's trying to teach you the thing you just told him and he mm. and he doesn't realize that you just said that to him. Yeah. Mm. Well, I, yeah. Well, yeah, I will absolutely. Well, that's just mansplaining. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which I just did, by the way. I mansplained all this <laughs> uh, in, one, in one sentence. For Khalees, I think what you're trying to say, Khalees, if I if you don't mind, <laughs> if you don't mind, with your it's woman splendid. brain, how could you ever figure? <laughs> let me figure it out. What I did all, take a journey. <laughs> <laughs> what's also funny is that, um, and I and I'll tell you the connection that we have. A lot of times, I can say something to you, and I don't have to explain it. Not only <laughs> that, but I don't even have to give the example. Like I, I say, Jill Scott said, you could tell me what to do, but you got to be able to. I know you know exactly what I mean is this. That's why I'm thinking of this thing. It's like, OK, so it's not that you got to be physically intimidating. It, right. it You have to be smart enough that I respect what you said. But but there's also charm because you can't respect yeah. a, a teacher unless they charm you out of your ignorance. So there's so many qualities that go together in making a woman like. Respect that you might have something better to say than her. Right, 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 right. Or, or, well, let me let me push back on that. That is also your standard. And that's because you are charming and funny and interesting and creative. And so you're probably going to end up by yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and, I'm, and, I, and I mean, I, I really, 
so it's it's a funny thing. Like I have a um, there's a young lady I used to date, and uh, long story short, she was going through a really rough time. She so she she dated me, and she was really needy, right? Um, so I'd be like, man, I forgot what I was gonna say, and she was like that I look beautiful and I would be like, Ugh. like <laughs> that you love me. No, that's not what I was thinking at all. And and it this this kind of constant, you know, m- m- parlaying for compliments and stuff, which is just really ugh God. But um so she dumped me and she she started dating and this ugly dude, right? And he was corny. And she was like, you know, listen, I'm getting older. I'm going to give this guy a shot. Clearly, I'm better than him. But I'm going to put in this. And they ended up getting married. They had, they ended up having twins, wow. right? And then, um, and she, you know, because women also, through proximity and habit, you imprint on somebody. So so I guess she, she eventually loved them. And then the minute she started showing that she loved them, he was a basketball coach. And he started fucking ev- all of his players' moms. Like he was, mm. right? So as soon wow. as he got her, like, you know, she was way out of his league. But what year? Got- I want to know what year he was coaching. I don't know if that makes a difference. But I'm <laughs> curious. It doesn't really matter. Uh, but, but so, and then uh, they were married, and then she would call me up for advice. She calls me up and she said, You know, this month they went to couples therapy. And they were, the therapist was like, look, you have all these female friends, these other mothers. What what and it hadn't come out that he was fucking them yet, right? But mm-hmm. he had all these, and they were like, You have to give up these, your your marriage is more important. And he was like, I am not giving up my friends. And uh and and then she found out later he was fucking her. So she called me up and she says, I uh I remember her going to a play with her mom and she was outside the play and she called me up just crying something had happened I said this motherfucker blah 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 blah. he ain't shit I, I was like look i could tell you how to turn this around so that you would have full control over this i said but understand this once you gain full control over this relationship you're not gonna love him no more you're not gonna huh. respect him no more and then the relationship, it's eventually it's it's just gonna be over because a woman is never gonna stay in love with a dude that she doesn't respect, that she doesn't admire, that she doesn't kind of look like, oh, this dude is dope. She was like, I don't care, tell me, tell me. I don't I wanna I'm tired of this bullshit. And I was like, All right. And I the the first thing I told her, I said, Listen, I need you, you you're you're available. Too available, you got to go out. I go, I don't care if you go to out and just sit and drink a drink by yourself and watch the game on TV. You got to go out. And I go, but you need to be dressed. Like, you need to be fine. You need to, be, like, put it on the six. And, and she was like, right. so, you know, the first she got dressed and went out. And she he, he could smell the perfume. And he was like, you know, because he'd be in the basement talking to all these chicks. And then. All of a sudden, she was out and looking fine. He was like, whoa, wait a minute. Where, 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 where are you going? You know, I'm just going out with my girlfriends. Didn't give a fuck. It happened again. Then she calls me up uh, maybe about three weeks later. He's yelling and fighting, punching walls. And I go, <laughs> yeah, because I go, I go. But like, I knew every move that I made on the chessboard. I already knew what his response was going to be. Because it was a cornball. It's just like this is somebody who's insecure, who who thinks that somebody who could have the audacity to love him is is lesser because she loves him. It's like I hate myself and you love me. Something uh, must yeah. be wrong with you. Like, oh yeah, and and you know what? I had that too. And especially because she was out of his league, they always think, "Well, what's wrong with you? If you're out of your league and you're dating me." They wow, they never think, you? yeah. They never think it's a choice. They never think it's it's what's wrong with you. Yeah, yeah. And and it's kind of right because she stooped. Yeah, yeah. And but then don't you be ungrateful. Yeah, and, and, <laughs> and then you also didn't raise to the heights of being a doper dude to go. Wow, I I didn't think you had it. You know what I mean? Because that can yeah. happen too. 
But it's never that. It's always, you know, people always put it externally because they don't have to take responsibility and they don't they don't have to do real work. You know, um, it, it's a it's an interesting thing. I I think that. But as you you you're creative and you're beautiful and you're you're charming and you know, all of these things. I don't mean to flatter you and stuff, but it's <laughs> like. But then who's you got to think about who's going to ma- match that? <laughs> I forget that. Who's going to marry you? Because he's not brought you on this podcast to go. Who's oh, going to fucking marry you? Oh, bitch? there's plenty of dudes with The marry intervention? You. Yeah, but they. But I thought just... I'd be married and divorced and have so many kids right now. But you know what? It's that <laughs> it's that honesty factor. I can't even get that far with these people. Yeah. Well. So I mean, you, it's a higher was, level, though, of, of everything, you know, when especially when you do something that's unique and interesting in the arts, there's a higher level that that has to be maintained for that other person to come in for you to even have an interest in maintaining something with them. I know my girl uh, who went over to my uh, my friend's apartment. Josh, we know he's a guest of the show, Josh Ricardo. We went to visit him, his wife, uh, his podcast. That's partner. crazy. You bring him up. I'm supposed to see him tonight. Yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. he's. Uh, hilarious hilarious dude yeah, I think he's doing he's well back. He's, yeah he just had a uh, cancer scare for a little bit but he's back um i had gone to see him and, and we had a great time with him uh we were just my my girl was there it was a nice like a couple's dinner we were having a great conversation and, and my girl because i have add she goes you know you seem very like uh connected and very you know not spaced out at all because sometimes i'll do that she goes, you seem very like attached to everything that was going on. I go, yeah, because the conversation was great because everybody in the room was very funny. I go, but it has to be such a high level of adrenaline, of interest, of humor, of uh, I- great ideas that it's hard to do that on a normal basis with regular people, which makes relationships for the most part tough, if that makes sense. Like it just you can't just be with a square, so to speak, just in life in general. When you're doing interesting shit in your life, yeah, it's, it's you. You get so dope that you kind of you 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 can't you don't play good with others because it's like I I was I was hanging out with Godfrey and and uh, we was on the road and uh, there was this dude and this guy who's a, like a local filmmaker and and it's just like every time he opened his mouth I was like. Uh, stop talking like if nothing you say is interesting it's and then you find yourself in you find yourself in the center and what you're saying is becomes a lecture instead of becoming a, 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 a an engage of thoughts and it's just you know I mean when you talk about being charming and being funny and then being smart enough to have something I mean that's such a high bar and the thing is you you know you're only going to get better you know what i mean the bar only goes higher <laughs> so you know i i you almost like you 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 know you got to have a guy you know what do you do you pick a guy all right i don't mind fucking him and he's not annoying and then i'll i'll get this stuff from other people you know what i mean from other relationships you know yeah i don't know um I'm I'm scared. <laughs> I'm I, like I I just I'm a curious person, and I like to think of things creatively. Yeah. I like new information. I like when new things happen. So yeah, I don't know. Um, but that's also qualities of a psychopath. Just not you know, like <laughs> needing stimulation and needing people to constantly be intriguing in order to engage with them. That's that's not a good thing. Um, I mean, I disagree because those are the people. I mean, you always, you always say, who's Michael Jordan's best friend? I, I don't know. Who's Bruce Lee's best friend? I don't know. Uh, who's Muhammad Ali's best friend? I mean, you know, these people who who achieve levels of, of greatness, it's, it also comes from this isolation, this, this ability to think higher than everybody else, which makes them, makes you... It isolates you to a to a certain extent, and uh, and you choose that path. Not what the only thing is, once you choose the path, you can't not. Like, Do you think that's why these celebrities get into drugs because that's really, really, really connects themselves to themselves? It's like the ultimate mental masturbation. Um, like my my brain on acid though. Look, I'm 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 cool here, but my brain on acid is like I can't even talk to myself. Well, I think I think it depends. 
you know, because you think about like we talked about, we, you know, I, we had a lot of big discussion about Will Smith. And then you you create this this level of expertise. Right. But you're lying. You know what I mean? Like that mm-hmm. di- that dude was lying the whole time. He, he created this whole persona and he never even dealt with his own personal insecurities. And so, I mean, like, I, you know, I talk about uh, like Kurt Cobain. Is like this dude changed the face of rock, created grunge rock, and then had all the accolades and all the money, and then he put a gun in his mouth. You know what I mean? It's like there has to be some kind of realization that this is happening, that the growth is happening. If you're honest enough to understand that the growth is happening and you're in in that creative space, I think it's very different than somebody who is just talented and creative but is not aware that it's all the same thing. I, I think what's what what really makes you, um, and I mean I mean you specifically, just it elevates is because you understand that it's all the same thing. It's all relative, like relationships and comedy, and it it all works. You know what I mean? It's like, I, and I, and let me let me um say this to the audience: if you ever get a chance to see. To see Khalees do comedy, very, very fucking funny. Just makes me laugh all the time. So honest, so open, mm-hmm. and so honest. And I think it's uh, is what I love the most. But I think I think you're also aware of it. Like there's an awareness that you have it in your it, oh shit. In uh, there's an awareness in um. Can, uh, Harry, can we take a break real quick? Yeah, sure, hold on. It's the same timeline. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I think what happens is you 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 grow and when you're not worried about when you're not when you're not ego driven, you become better and you become about the, the art and the work and and the self-introspection because you want to be happy. You need to do that. And then you don't realize how quickly and how fast you're growing and how the people around you that you would most that you're most comfortable with or people in your in your sphere, you're growing past them. And you don't you just assume that they're all growing together. And then when you then you realize, oh, you you was just bullshitting the whole time. You you, you I thought we had a deal, you know, <laughs> it's like, and it's like, no, we no, that was just you. So I, I think the problem with the problem is being dope is hard because you get so dope that people don't like you because. You are, they see you as a, um, they see you initially as a peer, right? Oh, I'm just, I'm as good as her. And then when, when they can't do or say, or they can't, they don't get the response that you get, then they go, well, um, you have to figure out why is it that her results are so much better than mine? Why do people respond to her in that way? And then they so there's only three reasons for that. Either number one, I thought she was my equal and she's not. Um, number two, she is my equal and just I don't work as hard. She works harder than me. Mm-hmm. Or three, somehow she found a way to cheat the system. Now, <laughs> now the first one is difficult because you have to recognize, you have to admit that you're not as good as you thought you were. Nobody picks that. Two. Uh, nobody takes option two because it means you actually have to do some work. Mm-hmm. You have to get up off your ass and do some work. So, oh, so she must have been, you must have been cheating the mm-hmm. whole time. And there's two and, kind of cheaters. The yeah. one who's cheating how they think when they're when they're being jealous and petty. Right. And the one who's cheating because you can't see that talent. Yeah, you don't, right. you don't, you don't understand. So you go, that's cheating. <laughs> <laughs> How you? How you jump that high, Mister Jordan? You what do you guys? <laughs> is it shoes? Is it the shoe? It must be the shoes. Everybody could be affected on every level of that too, because yeah, I had to put myself back in my own skin, going, oh wait, 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 Dante likes me, so he's talking about how people look at me, because I'm looking at a couple people like shit. I gotta, I gotta rethink why I wish I was in their spot, and maybe I'm not working as hard as them, but. To be completely honest, as much as I would want to attack myself and say I'm not working as hard, it's like my priorities 
went towards the child and I'm just not capable of working as hard as I would have independently of having this child. So right. I got I got two more years and we we, we don't know what's going to happen then. I'm going to have time. Um, and it's also also I think what happens is you you also have to um, take into consideration a lot of the people that are on top are liars. You know? <laughs> yeah. And then there, there's a misconception. I mean, like, you know, we, you know, people talk about, talk about, and I, I'm, and I'm, I'm not, and maybe I'm speaking out of turn. Maybe I'm not, but I mean, I, I think that Chappelle is great, but I've never seen Chappelle not without a drink in his hand. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I've never seen him. You know what I'm saying? It's so. Is that recent or is that all the time? Was that before? All, all the time. All the time. Uh-huh. When it wasn't weed, it was it was alcohol, and that more so alcohol. I didn't see the alcohol early on, but and then and then you have an entourage of motherfuckers who clearly are not at your level that you got around that is jacking you off, telling you know what I'm saying that don't even challenge you in a way to go hey, hey that that's not you know you know because they because now it's about the bag. So you got you got 10 motherfuckers running around telling you you're great. And and if you buy into that, then what you do, then you you slow your own progress because you letting these motherfuckers, these inferior motherfuckers stroke their ego. So it's a it's a really weird kind of thing that happens. And it's just um, I think, you know, a lot of times you got to you got to remember who you are, you know, and that it doesn't always equate to money and fame and things like that i mean if you oh, i'm if, glad you said that i'm so glad you said that why is that, that that's important i think because that's that's the that's the biggest lie that throws you off mm-hmm. it's because of this social construct yeah. that we're attaching our level of what we have to actual actually offer anything at all we're attaching it to yeah. whether or not it makes money but yeah. the problem with that is you know, it. W- you take a personality like I, I was thinking about this the other day, and I'm trying not to overexpose. But yeah. you take certain personalities and you put them in different time periods, you put them in different roles. Some mm-hmm. of those challenges are no longer here for whatever Absolutely. animal instinct is left in us Absolutely. to yeah. to be good at. Yeah. Some of the some of the things about me that cost me problems in this society yeah. would have Which, made me yeah. in charge. But yeah. I can't, I can't, I can't walk around like that right now without people being right. like, would you want to fuck me? And I'm like, nah, I'll fuck you. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> and it takes, a, it takes a certain confidence to go, oh, um, any notes? <laughs> yeah, I know what I'm doing, but I I still, you know, this is a yeah. different this Yeah, because I, mean, I don't know your triggers. I don't know your trauma. Right, I don't know right. the things that came and right. saved you from that trauma. I don't know which things, what's the story going on in your head yeah. while we're doing this thing. And once you tell me that story, I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna help you out. <laughs> right, right. And and the dope shit is the dope shit is when the when you can tell little bits of the story and the guy could put the puzzle pieces together yeah. before you have, then you like, oh, this nigga, oh, <laughs> ooh, we like, like, don't make me have to tell you the whole thing. Look, look <laughs> I gave you a clue. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, like, I, to, I keep trying not to overexpose myself. <laughs> I want you to be good at this. I want, <laughs> I'm rooting for you. I'm, I'm like, <laughs> warmer, warmer, hotter, colder. <laughs> Yeah, it's um it's a it's a really difficult kind of thing. Um let me ask you this. What the last relationship cuz I thought you were, I really the one I the, just got out of a yeah, couple yeah, months yeah. ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh it's fresh fresh. Huh? It's fresh. I uh, like I think I think two two nights ago the first time was the second time somebody um found out about it in public and I didn't cry. I mean, uh, I, obviously I'm very resilient. You see it yeah, either yeah, that yeah. or Yeah, yeah. It's something else going on in my chemistry, but, (laughs) but it does, it does affect me. And it does, it does like, I have to look at myself and go, am I being depressed? Because it's hard to tell when you're being depressed, when you uh, are a curious person and you're staying kind of stimulated, but I guess I'm less social right now. Yeah. I mean, but that's, you know, that's, 
Well, it's supposed to be. I mean, you have to think about it. I, 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 I so this is, um, you know, if somebody had called me up and paid for a consultation and was like, I just got through this breakup. The first thing I would tell them is that you have to understand that we are still mammals. We're mammalian, we're primates, and we imprint on each other and we get comfortable with each other. We get comfortable with each other's smell and taste and the tone of their voice, the cadence of their voice, their movement. It becomes normative because of time makes it normative. And then when you take that away, it's just you notice that it's missing. And so the response is that we want to we want this kind of homeostasis of the way it was and then when you take this element out um we different always seems worse because it takes away our comfort when sometimes different is better in fact most of the time different is better um but you need time you know that's probably why relationships wait until it's so 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 bad because yes. in yeah. Once you're heartbroken, it's so bad that it doesn't yeah. matter if they're there or not. Yeah. So yeah, maybe that's why they wait until they're at rock bottom so that it's the same feeling of not being with them. Because that's how I feel at the end of the relationship. You go, well, you might as well not be here. And, and there's no, nothing personal against any yeah, yeah. of my exes. Yeah. But it's just the level of closeness. Yeah, this, this is not and good. Love this, and that's not even the animal. It's not even a part. We're not, it's not supporting. The foundation's well, broken. There's a, there's a saying that there's nothing lonelier than being with the wrong person. Mm. Mm. Like, it, that's worse than being lonely is being with somebody where it's not clicking and you're not connecting. Because you're like, I could do this on my own. That must be why the DMV feels so horrible. You're like, is there anybody listening? (laughs) You see all the DMV TV jokes. My car got told for the first time a few months ago. And I was like, Uh, oh, really? (laughs) Just like on TV, you're just going to treat me like shit? I'm not a criminal. I just can't read the parking signs. (laughs) I think it's also, also, but I don't know if it's lonely being with the wrong person, I think it just gets aggravating that it just becomes unfun. I mean, I'm not, if I'm with the wrong person, I'm just like, Ugh. you know, I, I want to get away. Um, as opposed to when I'm, oh, I'm just so lonely. I don't, I don't, it just, the just the presence of somebody in your, somebody in your presence that you don't want to be there. I, I think it's, it's, it's uncomfortable. It was like, it's not, it's like your AC not working and you just, Sitting there hot for no reason, <laughs> just like fuck. <laughs> uh, fuck. Um, what what broke it up? Like what was well, the I was thing? I just want to say real quick, I think like maybe because I, I am in a cynical era though, because I am it is fresh, but maybe that's why some of these relationships work. Social media has exposed the lie that keeps relationships together. Mm. It's two people that can agree upon a lie for a long time yeah. and you see them lying you see them in person and then you see them on their social media you go oh that's the lie you agreed to tell each other yeah. that's the relationship you yeah. think you're in yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. and it's I, don't, never, I, don't, I don't know how to do that <laughs> yeah i don't know how to do it either and it, it gets to the point where it, it 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 um it bothers me that you that it's okay for you it's, and i think that's what happened in this relationship mm. i think that this creative shit in my head sometimes fills in the blanks of potential and it's nothing against them because Mm -hmm. they're fully human and whatever they are and whoever they're going to end up with. But the thing I feel in is to step them closer to be with me. And so as the relationship goes on, it gets, it gets grueling to keep up and say, I am that person. Wait, wait, I'm, 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 I'm confused. You're saying you're saying that you the pers- idea of what I think they are, they can't okay. keep up with it for the whole, you know, they can't like I build them up in my head and they and they they just uh and they're not that. They're not that. But they've it's, also I, I'm, they've I'm not, I don't know if I'm being fair. I, I'm talking about something as simple as somebody being comfortable with my sexuality. It's kind of like what you're saying, but I'm the girl, so it's like you gotta be comfortable that I have a history. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. So, you know, you find out way later down in the relationship that that's a uh, this, you know, you think you're, you know, you want to be with somebody who's proud to be next to you, not somebody who's being strong. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. 
it's it that's a funny thing it's funny i got a i got a good friend of mine one of my best friends um and uh he um and then i was i was dating this girl this was when i was stripping so this was and i was like she had a boyfriend and i was like look i don't really care what you do just don't fuck my friends I mean, you didn't fuck everybody else but my friends. So I didn't want her to, and and I mean, my immediate stripper dudes, right? And she was, she was fucking like two, three dudes that I knew. And I had, and they kind of took, uh, it was funny because they, they took a hint from me. Like they were, like I was their mentor in a way. And so I was like, when you walk in these places, if you're fucking with somebody, everybody doesn't not, not everybody's not supposed to know that you're fucking them because your money is is attached to your ability to be accessible. Mm-hmm. So, so if you got some money and you're dating them and you have an intimate relationship with them, you know, you kiss them on the cheek and you, you know, maybe get them grab them by the waist and you give them a little squeeze. It's a little personal squeeze and let you know, well, we know everybody else don't know. Right. Mm-hmm. And I walked in and I saw her and I was like, hey, babe, what's up? Blah, 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 blah. And, and uh, everybody else would call me by my stage name and she would call me by my real name. And then two niggas I was with walked in behind me and they gave her a little squeeze and then another thing. And I was like, oh, so I was like, yo, something. Boom, boom, boom. I didn't even say nothing. I just I just stopped calling. I just became unaccessible. Right. And so um, she was like, I've been calling you. What are you afraid of me? You're afraid of me. And I go, I'm a lot of things, but I'm not afraid. And she was like, oh, you act, you're you scared, you scared. And I go, I'm not scared. It's just you fucking all my friends. And I just asked you not to fuck my friends. I just, so a thousand other motherfuckers you can fuck, but you're fucking my friends. And she's like, oop, right? And I go, I'm not mad at you, but this it's is over. this. This is where my boundaries are. Like, if you think that those dudes are worthy, then you're not worthy. I know these clowns. You know what I mean? And I'm not mad, but, you you know, we can't rock. So my one of my best friends, she was bad, too. She was smoking. And one of my friends kind of went, started fucking with her. And then he didn't tell me because he knew I had, you know, he didn't, he didn't want to tell me. And I, I was like, dog, I... I'm I'm not it's she could do what she want to do. I mean, I don't own her or nothing. I it just was and I said she's a really great girl. I think she really wants a dude to be down for her and 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 I and I think and you might be that dude. I said but I said then but understand this, she has a past, right? And if you can't respect and give her the the breadth of 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 space to have a past. Don't put her in a situation where you're going to be with her and then punish her later for some shit you knew what what it was. It's just not fair. So he, he ends up having a kid with her, right? And then he's abusive, constantly abusive because it's in. And then I'm even hanging out with them because we're him and I are cool. We're doing double dates and stuff like that. You know, he he's not, you know, he he probably should have ended the friendship with me because he couldn't deal with it. But you if you're not that if you can't do that and move on, then stop lying to yourself that you know what I'm saying? And then you're gonna abuse somebody else for some shit. It, it just it's just so unfair. Look at your face. <laughs> that happened to me. Yeah. <laughs> More than once. I mean, it's surprising. I, I wonder, um, you know, it's 2023 and a lot of things have changed, but some things have not changed and people are not that flexible when it comes to relationships yeah. and uh, when it comes to what it makes them feel about themselves. We definitely have invested too much on the person who's reflecting us to ourselves yes. because we don't we don't try hard enough to see ourselves clearly. I know that I've done this on purpose. Like I've been in a longer relationship because I know that they anchor me because honestly, I don't think I I was a very isolated child and a very nerdy, you know, and I'm a very like, you know, aloof person. I, 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 I'm, I can be a social butterfly or I could just be completely alone. And in this industry, the way things move around, you know, you stay around it too long, you lose friends to 
fame, you lose friends to failure. And mm. after Jealousy. a while, you just don't, yeah, you just don't hang out in the groups as much anymore. Yeah. So I think some of the relationships I'm in is sometimes the only semblance of, uh, of who I am I know. And you could fall into that trap of thinking you are who that person's responding to. So that's one thing people have to be very careful. Yeah, Don't, yeah. If somebody's responding to you in a way that doesn't make you feel quite you or that you have to keep reframing for them like you have to keep telling them no don't respond that way because i'm this other person who needs this other response if you got to keep doing that they're gonna drive you crazy explain that in specifics like give me specifics like instead of generally give me an example of that so uh, let's say like uh hmm Let's say I'm a girl who I'm not a girl who's into crystals. No, I'm not. But I got interested in them at one time. So let's say I'm a girl into crystals and you date a guy who's like that crystal stuff. You know, uh, you're wacky. There's mm. something there's something wrong with you. There's something wacky about you. You go, no, I'm just I just think it's cute. I like these crystals. I like all the lore. It's no, you know, it's yeah. no different than watching a TV show. I just. I like the characters of these crystals. Right. I like, I like the the things that they say they offer. I'm really yeah. into it. And sometimes when I, it's just like meditation. Sometimes I can connect to these themes and mm-hmm. whether it's real or not, I'm enjoying it. And they keep attacking you, telling you, well, you enjoy it because there's something wrong with you. You need to find somebody who doesn't feel that way because it's going to drive you crazy. If that's the only person you have telling you that what you're doing is, is insane. It's just, it's kind of like Norman Bates in relationships. Mm. they'll fucking norman bates mom you they'll be like you mm. you know what i mean don't don't play in my heels you're <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're an abomination <laughs> if somebody makes you know okay hold on let me let me jump ship on this this is this is another this is another thing i want i want to talk about because this is what it reminds me of for men you guys not being allowed to have an emotion i have a friend who when they would cry they would be like i'm so upset that i felt that way and then they would shame themselves. I go, the crying wasn't the mistake. Mm. It was the shaming yourself afterwards that made you go crazy because you didn't let yourself have that vulnerability. Mm. In a relationship, people can be that thing. You you exploring crystals isn't the mistake. That's not the embarrassment. It's the person telling you, you should be ashamed of yourself. That's the mistake. That mm. person is the mistake. Get rid right. of that mistake. Don't make that mistake anymore. Right, right. <laughs> Right, right, right. Let's, I mean, let's, we're going to do at behind the scenes, the Patreon, um, plug your shit, anything you got going on, you want to talk your social media, please follow Khalees. I love her to death. <laughs> yeah. You can just, so, you can just follow me at Khalees Hawkins. Um, it's C-A-L-I-S-E Hawkins. There's a writer's strike right now. There's not that much going on. I'm, I'm on stage at New York Comedy Club a lot. And sometimes I'm at Stand Up New York tonight. I'm at Stand Up New York. Mm. But not not when this podcast comes out. So you just have mm. to find me. All right, cool. Khalees Hawkins, y'all. Check out very, very funny, enjoyable. Harry Talk. Hey, you could uh, always find my stuff at Harry Trajanian on all the social media, including YouTube and uh, Instagram and uh, TikTok. And also uh, follow us over at Patreon, patreon.com slash manschool202. That's where we do the bonus episodes like we're going to do right now with Khalees. But also that's where the old episodes of Manschool uh, AKA the Beige Phillips show go up on Patreon. So you could sign up and that's where we're, we're uploading those episodes. Uh, one a day at this point. Yeah. Um, y'all know how to get me, Google me, Dante Nero, you know what it is. Uh, if you need a consultation, go to Dante Nero.com, click on consult. You can get me. Don't forget to follow the Patreon, www.patreon.com slash man school 202. That's how we, we're able to keep doing this and, pay for equipment and wires and stuff so please do that um gybb get your balls back wwdd what would dante do sexual revolutions being podcast we check y'all on the patreon side peace